Hi guys, welcome to something interesting. What I have today will probably interest women more than men. It's something that we women cannot live without. And no, it's not men. We can certainly live without them. But probably what we cannot live without are lipsticks. Yes, I have something very interesting on lipsticks. Okay, going um, to the history of lipsticks. It goes back some 5,000 years. Um, ancient Mesopotamian women um, were famous for reddening their lips and they used to use a pigment which was a combination of iodine and bromine and an algin uh, which created a purplish red pigment and they used to use it for their lips um, but it was dangerous and it had and it caused serious illnesses so um, and it was also um, infamous for being called the kiss of death so that's a bit of an ugly start uh, to the history of lipsticks but Cleopatra, as a matter of fact, got her own lipstick made and she used beetles and the base was ants which were used, which gave that red color. So that's what Cleopatra used to probably entice Caesar. Um, and even the women of the Indus civilization were famous for reddening their lips. So it really, really is really that old, the use of lipsticks, but it's Kind of had its twists and turns throughout history and in medieval europe lipstick was actually banned and it was reserved only for prostitutes um, and it was um, around the 16th century when uh, it gained some popularity with queen elizabeth when she introduced the trend um, if you recall uh, any pictures of queen elizabeth where she has this really stark white makeup with blood red lips and that's when the lipsticks came in and it was still restricted to the upper class and um, actors of theater and even male actors and uh, then a downturn again with Queen Victoria who openly spoke against the use of lipstick and she declared that makeup was impolite and during the French Revolution anyone who was wearing the lipstick was seen as a sympathizer of the French aristocrats and uh, that would be serious trouble you would be sent straight to the guillotine so um, uh, it was no good supporting um, <laughs> lipstick on your lips or supporting the French aristocrats during the time of the revolution and in British law um, it, it was it was bizarre to the point that it actually was taken to the parliament that uh, uh, a law should be passed that any woman who's used um, lipstick before her marriage her marriage should be annulled and the rationale being that women tricked men into marrying them by wearing uh, lipstick that helped seduce them so it went to that point um, which is totally bizarre and um, it was only until the 1920s that the lipstick started to become mainstream. Even before that, uh, the fashionable women in New York or London were cautioned while uh, wearing the lipstick because it was seen as something, again, restricted um, to women that were not respectable or were prostitutes. Um, and interestingly, in the 1920s, it started becoming mainstream. And the Hollywood industry really helped to, it had a pivotal role in popularizing the use of lipstick. And it was in the Great Depression in the 1930s when the lipsticks really sold because people could not afford um, uh, big luxuries, but they could afford these small ones and it would just perk the women up. So there was a lot of purchase of lipstick. Um, Moving on, uh, in the 1930s, there was a survey that revealed that 50% of the teenage girls had to actually fight with their parents uh, on uh, wanting to use the lipstick. So it was really not taken um, uh, well received and parents did not want the young girls or teenage girls wearing lipstick. And probably in some parts of the world, even today, I think a lot of teenage girls are not allowed to wear lipstick and they need to go for more natural colors or a lip gloss or a lip balm, but not lipstick so it's really not something that even to date in some parts of the world is so well received and it was only in the 1915 
that the lipstick actually came in a metal cylindrical uh, container and then the swivel lipstick came around in the 1920 in 1923 and before that they were really packaged in a paper tube so it wasn't really very convenient so if you were um, you you could only wear lipstick when you were at home and you couldn't really refresh it and you couldn't really go around carrying a paper tube with lipstick in it um, so it was really as recent in 1923 where you see the the lipstick that we see today um, and if you look at the ingredients of lipsticks they obviously contain various emollients there's oil there are waxes and um, beeswax is actually one of the popular ingredients that is used to date and there are also fish scales which apparently bring in uh, the shimmer and the shine on lipsticks um, and then the various kind of fats but you can research that on your own I'm not going to get into the details of what makes an in what makes in uh, makes a lipstick but you know what it'll be interesting uh, as to what you find but what's really really Im important that a woman in her lifetime could actually ingest four to six pounds of lipstick so it's very important that you always use quality products because you want to be very sure of what's going in your stomach and um, if you want your lipsticks to last longer you can actually refrigerate them and that's going to actually increase their lifespan well that depends if you don't eat them all up so that's a little something on uh, lipsticks and i thought that was really really fascinating but what's really important is to use quality products so that's something that I have for the girls. Um, I think boys who like makeup could also find this information informative. So I'll see you guys next time. Till then, bye-bye.